here you have hundreds of different people and hundreds of different tribes that are coming together. People that have many different views on how we're going to fight this pipeline. People believe that the only way we're going to fight this pipeline is that we face off and we fight direct head on. Some people think the best way is the legal route. Some people feel that you know, prayer is the most powerful thing and that's, that, that's the only way that, that we're going to beat this. But as Indigenous people, we have to uh, understand that, that we come from respect. You know, that's who we are as Indigenous people and respecting the way that people believe. There's been a group ever since we got here, you know, that one of, some of us are out of here. And, uh, we, but we're still here, you know, we, we didn't want to go. We weren't going to go nowhere because we know nothing was going to happen if we left. There was a lot of fighting that went on too because they didn't want to camp doing actions no more. They didn't understand, really, they didn't understand direct action, so they, were, they just didn't want it, you know, the whole tribe and all the council and everybody. There's been a lot of issues with peace police and how people have been fighting the struggle, even when it's been just lockdowns. The peace police, both here in treaty territory, much as I've seen them over the years in urban settings and demonstrations, are folks who tend to, for one reason or another, feel that their concern for other people's safety trump any good tactics or any of those individuals who may be putting themselves knowingly in harm's way trumps their opinions that they, they have made to choose to be in harm's way. Who are the peace police? It's a combination of people that are closely affiliated with the tribe, people that have like monetary interests in different NGOs. So even some people that came here that like threw down in Ferguson and Baltimore that were part of those struggles have come here and have felt relatively immobilized because they've tried to be good comrades and differing to indigenous leadership. But the, there's such a struggle between different groups as to like who is Indigenous leadership and what it means to be here in a good way and what it means to resist in a way that's beneficial to the local community. There was this group of people that came in, they were just all about a peace, peace, and they were bringing real spiritual items and trying to use them against the people and it caused a lot of confusion and fear and, uh, I don't know, anger. Take my badge away, I'm the some of our own people that were policing our own people, telling our own warriors and water protectors that we're taking direct action to go back, go back to camp. You can't both ask people to come and fight and use civil disobedience and nonviolent direct action tactics and similarly lose your spine for those tactics when people start getting injured or the police start responding with the sorts of violence that we train folks to expect. When we instead tell folks that this will be accomplished through the courts or this will be accomplished through prayer, why were so many people asked to come to be physically present? These peace police have time and time again scuttled and interfered with actions that were well under the momentum to be successful and they were hampered.